Top of the morning to everybody. Okay, I'm going to be doing a little bit of uh, interesting stuff today. Um, we're going to be working on the Fletcher Jones, and since there are so many differences in Final Cut Pro, we're going to touch on a few of them. Um, one of the things I want to show you is this is what's called the main screen, and Final Cut Pro, you can show events in the main window or you can show events on the second display and your computer will kind of pick the second display. Uh, the way I have it is the one to the left is second and the one to the right is third. Um, so it will always pick the one to the left for me. But what's interesting is this is the main window and it's not necessarily your main display. It's whichever one has this little close box on it. So if I move this over, my events show up in, this, in the main display or cinema one. If I move it back, it switches. So I'm going to be doing that a lot today because I want you to see some of the things that I'll be picking um, as I go through the events. And I don't really want to lose these two windows. I have a viewer display and a canvas window, and I really like having those. So we'll see how this goes. This should be good. All right, first thing I'm going to do is I have a library for Fletcher Jones. Um, so I'm going to open that up and here it comes now I'll show you what exactly it's opening once it's done loading it'll switch it over okay I originally had this library open I'm actually going to close this library now um, this is my main library where I do most of my stuff I think from now on I'm going to start putting projects or, or clients in their own libraries. That way I can archive them really easily. I'll just have to grab the archive and stick it on a Blu-ray and I'm done. Or grab the library and stick it on a Blu-ray. Okay, so I have two events here. Let me open this up just a bit. It's not letting me pull it. There it goes. I want to expand that just a bit so you can see. Okay, I have two events here. One from last week and one from this week. And the one from this week is the one I'm going to focus on. Okay, I've got all my clips. These clips have some issues, probably stabilization. Now, one thing I did, um, once I imported all these clips, I selected them all and then I right-clicked on one of them which right clicked on all of them essentially and I hit analyze and fix and then this came up and I hit analyze for stabilization and rolling shutter and I hit OK now it shouldn't be analyzing anything this came I, sh I brought this up to, to watch the progress transcoding and analysis suddenly had a progress bar and it went through every single clip and transcoded and analyzed them and and made sure that they're all good. So now my motion stabilization should be ready to go. I shouldn't have to sit there and wait for it to analyze them anymore. Um, but I'll double check and find out. Okay. So we've got two projects here actually. Uh, the first one we have is the paid program, which we will make. And then the next one we have is this commercial, which we will probably save for a later date. So, let's do this. Let's grab these items. And I'm going to bring this back over here. And I'm going to create a new project. Oh, you know what? I should put this over here while I do this. Okay. The new project is Fletcher Jones Toyota Paid Program 01. Uh, Saturday is the 11th, right? Today's the 9th. Yes, 11. 2014 1.0 and everything looks good this somehow switched back to 1440 earlier so I switched it up later on okay okay and it creates a new project and here's my timeline and windows all right so I don't like that there I'm gonna hit E and place everything in there all right so it's all in there 
Now, I made a mistake earlier. Oh, no. Let's see. Carlos did everything on this, this particular show. So I don't have to worry. Oh, he did this one twice. His mic was rubbing on his jacket on this first segment. I could hear it. Actually, it was underneath his tie, and I could hear it. Um, let me see if you can hear it here. It's not so apparent there, not until he starts turning. Este es el deportivo, viene con sus rines de aluminio, faros para la niebla, viene con su sunroof, con su colita, can super equipado. I had to stop him and say, hey, can you do that again? Let me turn these off and you might be able to hear a little better. Faros para la niebla, viene con su sunroof, con su colita, super equipado, con interior negro, cuatro cilindros. Okay, yeah, there's a little rubbing sound in there, so I had him redo it. I had him switch his tie or his mic to the outside of his tie and redo it. I don't know why that waveform is not coming up. There it is. Okay, so let's cut these pieces. I'm using the command B this time. Let's go to the end here and take a look. Okay, there's my waveform. Command B. If you do command B while you're moving, it'll sometimes do it at the joint or wherever your CTI is at the time. So you have to be careful. I do it all the time. It frustrates me. Command B. I like that car. I think I would enjoy owning one of those cars. Okay, this segment goes together. This was a split clip that separated over two carts. Yep. That's what it was. Okay, we'll leave that one alone. Cut those two out. I did this little thing and pulled some values on them. Like cool. We're gonna have to fill a lot here. He uh, he went too fast for me today. Twenty-five forty-five. So we've got to fill quite a bit. All right. Now. If I look through, I won't find my intro and outro in here. Um, I'm going to find my intro outro thing in here, which is fine. You know what? I should create a separate event for all these elements. What I should do. Um, so I've got my intro outro thing here. I can get rid of these. Okay. Intro, outro, and then the commercials are here. So let's grab intro, outro. Let me bring this back. Put intro, outro on the end and in the beginning. And let's see. Commercial. I went over and clicked on the commercial. I'm going to drop it in there. And drop it in there. I'm using the W key because the W key inserts the um, the clips rather than sending them to the end. 2755. So if I do that, 2825. Okay, I still need one in the very beginning. We'll do that. I'm at 2856. So let's cut this back and let's go to the beginning and cut some of this back right to the end of that let's see what we've got 2839 I still have to cut off nine seconds I 
it's not gonna work. Um, what can I do here? I can speed up a segment. That's what I'll do. Which one's the longest segment? We'll speed it up. This one's the longest segment. Okay, let's speed it up. Let's take it to 103. 2926. That way we can lengthen this out. Minus 8. Okay, what am I running here? 29.59. Okay, that's about 10 seconds. That's good enough for the disclaimer, I think. Um, that's four frames. This this actually is more than 30 seconds long. Look at this. 29.59 to 30.04. That's five frames too long. There we go. We'll leave it like that. Okay. All right, so we're good there. Now, since he was on the mic the whole time, I, on my camera, oh, this was the longest one, but that's okay. It's a split segment. We don't need to speed it up. On my camera, I, um, I had the audio set for channels one and two to receive that mic. So what you do is on the camera, you plug in channel 2. You plug the mic into channel 2. And then on the inside where the little LCD screen comes out, you can switch the audio so that both channels 1 or both the left and the right are taking from input 2. Now you can only do that on channel 2 input. You can't do that on the channel 1 input. It doesn't allow that option. Amigos, buenos días. Los saluda Carlos Ruelas, gerente de ventas de Fletcher Jones Toyota de la Casa de Latino. Recuerden, amigos, que estamos ubicados en... Okay. He's doing good there. Let's bring him down two decibels. Let's see this one, too. Esta semana te lo puedes llevar por solamente $15,997. Lo mejor de todo, te conseguimos el 1.9 de financiamiento. Aquí en Fletcher Jones Toyota tenemos de todas las marcas... That one looks if that one looks good, chances are they all look good. This one might be a little hot in the beginning. Amigos, muchas yeah, gracias por continuar. Okay. I don't want it peaking at the zero. I need it to peak it like around here, which is about negative two. So now that's what it should be doing. See Amigos, that? muchas gracias por continuar con nosotros aquí en Fletcher Jones sobre la casa de Latino. Recuerden, most of the time it's, gonna, the time it's gonna hang around es un modelo negative 2009. six. Tiene poquitas millas, eh? Tiene 19,000 millas. Actually, I turned it up. So let's take this back to zero. I mean, I turned it down. Um, and let's zoom in. I need to change this clip height. Okay, here it is. It's over here. Or is it? Right there. Okay, right here. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll put some keyframes here. I'm going to put one keyframe there and add another keyframe. And I'm going to bring this down negative two, like that. Now, what should happen is Boulder Highway. you get a nice. P nice hitting around negative six for most of the time, and then it's going to come up right here. So the rest of it, because I turned it down partway through the clip, the rest of it will stay fine. So if that's the case, everything else is zeroed out. It's good. So we're good there. All right. So now we have two, three, four five clips ready to rock and roll okay stabilization has changed um, I think I went through this on another thing but I I, I really want to bring it up here um, if I turn on the stabilization 
I see the analyzation should have been done already. It's going to sit here and analyze for dominant motion. So now it's doing that. So I will let it do that in the background. It moves pretty quick, but it still takes some time. All right. So while it's doing that, let's go ahead and build our titles. Now we've already arranged the the project. You can see it's pretty quick and easy. So all we That's need to do cool. now is create titles. So let's go ahead and move forward here. Here's where he talks about the car. And over here, I've got Fletcher Jones Toyota. Um, let's drop the original price on here. Take it to where he moves. As soon as he moves, shwink, right there. It starts moving. All right, that's where it's going to end. Okay, now, over on this other window, I've got, is it that car? No, it's not that car. This is a different car. Where did I put that car? It's a different lineup. Oh, that's why. All right. I started with that lineup. Then I went to this lineup. I believe I did I believe I did that first lineup just before we started shooting. It'd be this one right here. That's the one. All right. So I started on the back end. So my first one here, this is the last car. This is the car he's using right now. So it's this one here. All right. I know that was kind of weird to see um, because you're not seeing the other side that I'm seeing. So let me move this back over and you can see. Now, remember I told you I like having the um, two windows up. This is why. Okay. I go over and I click on the little sticker and I can see the sticker information and I can come in here and do it and I don't have to switch windows. Stock number CP3601. Oh, 2013 Toyota. Corolla S. Oh yeah. You know what? I should develop a way where I can throw the logos up there. That'd be sweet. Okay. He mentions the price, but it's also on the window if I can see it. Nope, I can't see it. Okay, we'll listen. 35 millas per gallon is super economic for the gasolina. Lo mejor de todo, certificado por la Toyota. Eso quiere decir que tiene una garantía de 7 años, 100 mil millas. Amigos, este, este auto tiene un precio regular en el mercado de $17,997. Este fin de semana te lo puedes llevar por solamente $15,000. He said it's 17997. That's how they all do it. Seven I mean that's how they do every single one is 997. So I really only have to pay attention to the first number. All right. So that's when he talks about the price. We'll put the new price right here. Fifteen nine nine seven. Um, he mentioned the one point seven or one point nine percent financing. All right. Just so you can see. Come on up. Bonk. All right. Here are my clips. One, two, three, four five, six clips. I'm going to drag these over and drop them on my project. So you watch me drag them like that. And now you can see where they are. They're in yellow. So let me do that again. Oh, one more thing. If I come up here and change this to video only, 
it won't take the audio with it, so I don't have to turn it off. All right, so there they are. Viene con sus rines de aluminio, luces para la niebla, viene con su sunroof interior negro, viene con su colita, cuatro cilindros, máquina 1.8 litros. Amigos, este te da 35 millas por galón. 35 millas por galón, es súper económico para la gasolina. Lo mejor de todo, certificado por la Toyota. Eso quiere decir que tiene una garantía de 7 años, 100 mil millas. Amigos, este, este auto tiene un precio regular en el mercado de $17,997. Este fin de semana te lo puedes llevar por solamente $15,997. Lo mejor de todo, te podemos conseguir el 1.9 de financiamiento. Cool, huh? All right, so if I right click, or not right click, since I've got those open and up, I can scroll down here, turn on the stabilization. And it'll analyze those for dominant motion as well. So it's going to add those to the list. See that list? It's getting longer. Now, the biggest problem I have with this stabilization right now is that I already went through and analyzed these for, for um, stabilization. It shouldn't have to do it again, and it usually does, and it's annoying. And the other thing that's annoying is it keeps sticking this title down on the bottom. I don't know why. All right, the next one is before it. So here's the information. CP3605. For those that don't know, I found out something about the, um, about the stock numbers. Um, The CP stands for Certified Pre-Owned. So if it doesn't have the Certified Pre-Owned, oh my goodness, how much does he say this one is? See, these ones are turned kind of funny, so I can't really get them in the shot. And this is 17 as well? 35. Haz una cita para que vengas una prueba de manejo. 35 millas por galón, también es certificado. Tiene un precio regular de $17,997 este sábado y el lunes se lo puedes llevar por solamente $15,997. Yeah, same thing. Okay. Here's why that one is so cheap, though. I mean, not so cheap. Why it's the same price as the other Corolla S. Ready? Well, it's not like you couldn't see the mileage right there. This car was very well taken care of. Um, if you look at what it has, don't give me that. Give me the whole thing, darn it. Oh, it probably did that over there too. All right, here it is. Look how pristine that is. Put little fish eye mirrors on it. Somebody doesn't like to turn their head and check blind spots. Okay, the analyzing for dominant motion is gone. See how they've, they've all disappeared now? So, if I go in here and I come down to stabilization, it's choosing an automatic method. Um, you have two different forms. You have inertia cam and smooth cam. Let's take a look at what each one does. Um, I'm going to do 0.5 on inertia cam. And I think inertia cam kind of combines all three of the stabilization methods together. Los teléfonos aparecen en pantalla. Llámanos, haz una cita para que vengas a una prueba de manejo. Solamente por venir y manejar un carro o una troca. Yeah, it makes me feel like I'm on a ship. I don't like that. Um, all right, let's change it to the other one, smooth cam. It, oh, cool. It didn't do the analyzing thing. 0 0.5, 0.5. It likes to do that, though, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. All right, now let's take a look at it. Nuestros teléfonos aparecen en pantalla. 
Llámanos, haz una cita para que vengas a una prueba de manejo solamente por venir y manejar un carro o una troca. Te una it still has kind of that rocky ship motion, motion, but not, but not so much. It's not doing the left and right. Um, the rotation thing is much. Tenemos más de 120 autos en inventario. Si no tenemos lo que andas. So good. We'll leave it like that. Let's do these ones too. Turn on stabilization. And since I've got these here, let's change this one to smooth cam. Super equipado. Viene con sus rines de aluminio, luces para la niebla, viene con su sunroof, interior negro, viene con su colita, cuatro cilindros, máquina 1.8 litros. Amigos, este te da 35 millas por galón. 35 millas por galón es súper económico para la gasolina. Lo mejor de todo, certificado. Eso quiere decir que tiene una garantía de 7 años, 100 mil millas. Amigos, este, este auto tiene un precio regular en el mercado de 17 mil novecientos. Estos están todavía analizando. Watch how fast they go, though. It's only got one left. Right. And it's done. Oh, not yet. There it goes. Okay. Cool. Close. Okay, so we can switch this to smooth cam and do the point 0.5. Point. Stop it. All right, so that's done. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and continue doing these graphics and I'll fast motion it while I do them um, so that you can see how it looks. You know, I'm gonna start using the copy and paste because that tends to do it properly. Um, so I'm gonna finish this, this up and then once I'm done with that, I will come back. Maybe I'll fill up the audio with some stories or something. Let me tell you how I got my start in television. Back when I was in high school, my interests were not television at all. I, I really, I didn't even think about television. Um, instead, I was curious in, in music and I, I was pretty big into music. My idea was I was going to be somebody that made music for video games or something like that. Um, I'm still pretty into music, but I don't practice nearly as much as I should. I don't get together with anybody to play anything. Um, I used to 10 years ago, but I don't anymore. It's It's been a while. So that was what I, I wanted to do. I, I really was heart set on, I want to make music for video games, this is what I want to do, um, this is what I'm going to be, and so I was going to go to music school and all this kind of stuff. How I got in here was, one day, my dad was passing by this old billboard that he saw, and, and so he was curious whatever happened to this particular TV station that he saw on the billboard, so he decided to do some research and find out, and he found out that it was sitting there, and it was for sale, and and nobody picked it up. Well, my dad was really heavily involved in Spanish radio at the time, and he owned a pretty healthy chunk of a radio station. So he knew that there was a market for Spanish anything, Spanish media, because it was only one decent radio station and one really crappy radio station and one low power television station. So he decided to work a business plan and get some investors involved so that he could build this television station in Spanish and carry a different network than the one that was out there already. Um, so that's what he did. And I was getting ready to, I mean, I was in my senior year in high school when he started putting this TV station together and he was telling us all about it. Now, I kind of thought, well, I'd like to do broadcasting like my dad and do radio stuff. That'd be kind of fun. Um, but I really didn't have my heart set on broadcasting at all. I wasn't too concerned with it. You know, I was like, oh, that, that might be all right. Well, what happened was we started putting this station together and because my dad didn't want to leave us all alone at the house all the time and he needed some help, like physical help, moving things around and stuff, he asked me to help out. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll help you. And he said, oh, after this, you might get a job working there. 
And I thought, okay. And he said, it'd be good money for, I mean, it would be money for while you're in high school. You can do stuff and go out and things like that. And I thought, okay, this, it'd be kind of fun. So I did. He put some ads in the papers for employees and stuff for what he wanted to do. And he found some people that would be able to fill in certain positions. Basically, what our deal was, was we would we'd air the network and then we'd insert commercials in the programming. So he had me working in master control and he got salespeople and all this kind of stuff. And so I started working in master control after uh, high school. I mean, not after high school. After I got out of school, I'd come over and work in master control. Now, I didn't know Spanish when I started. My English was great, but I didn't know Spanish when I started at all. I knew nothing. Um, I dated a girl in high school for a little while that taught me a couple of words. I knew, like, te amo, and um, that's it. So I didn't know much. You know, I, I really didn't know what I was going to be doing at this TV station. But I was taught by an ex-master control operator that worked at another station how to do stuff and and um, how to run the spots and how to run the machines. And, and it was an experience. I learned quite a bit. But while we were building this station, we had to do, in high school, we had to do a senior project. And it was something, it was supposed to be something that we'd never done before. A big project, I guess kind of like an Eagle Scout project, you could say. Um, we had to do something big that we'd never done before that would take a lot of effort. And we'd had to research and and put all this information together and show our results of what we did. And when I did it originally, I wanted to write a book. But my instructor said, no, that, that would take way too long. So don't do that. He said, find something else. So I said, you know what? I'm in this project of building a TV station. Why don't I just do that? So I started documenting the building of the TV station. And what I did was I ran around with a camera, um, a little handheld video camera that my dad had somewhere. And I started videotaping different things that we were doing. So I ran around with this video camera and I, my intention was to make a video presentation. And I thought it was kind of cool. And this is equipment that I'd never touched before. I was like really excited. I was like, man, this is really neat. It, I had no idea what a three-quarter inch cassette was. I'd never seen it. Nobody ever seen saw something like that before. And that's what we had was these three-quarter inch decks that were just sitting there from this old TV equipment that, that was there. I figured out how to connect these two these um, editing decks together and how to connect the camera to them. So I figured out how to do that, and I ran around with the camera and got some shots here and there. Not all of it was great. And then I kind of... To put together this presentation, I had to put it together in two minutes. I kind of crash edited everything together. It was it was an interesting little thing. And so I, I edited this little presentation together onto a three-quarter inch tape. And then I went through and um, converted it to VHS, which was awful. I mean, it really made it difficult. Um, when I got done, I was able to show the presentation, and I had music to it and everything. And actually, if I remember correctly, the music that I put to the presentation was music that I wrote um, and that I played on my synthesizer go with the presentation. If I remember correctly, I'm pretty sure that's what I did. After I did that, my dad saw the presentation, and he said, Are you sure you want to do music? And I was like, Yeah, I do. I, I mean, I really like it. And he says, Because... I could train you to do this, and you would be really good at it. And I was like, eh, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. And he says, you know, you can make quite a bit of money, and it's not as a volatile market as, as making music is. So I knew that the, the music market was pretty volatile and pretty tough to get into. I still wanted to do it. And, and I still do desire to do it, but I honestly don't think I'm as good as I used to think I was, perhaps with a lot more practice. So he said, you can make a lot of money doing this and, and you do a good job and it looks like you had fun doing it. And I said, you know what? Yeah, I, I did kind of like it. It was fun. I decided to do it. I decided to try my hand. So he said, after high school, after you've been doing master control for a year or so, I'll, I'll send you off with some other um, producer guys and you can learn how to produce commercials and, and do things because we need someone 
to do commercials. And I said, okay, I'll do that. That's pretty much what I've been doing ever since then. I enjoyed it a lot. And I went off with, with several different production houses and learned how they produce things. And we had a particular guy that did a lot of work for us. Um, and he kind of guided me and helped me out. And he taught me a lot. And he actually taught me a lot about live production. Taught me how to set up cameras and switch cameras. And he taught me about things like Genlock and timing. Now remember, these are back in the old days. This is before nonlinear editors even existed. They did have one nonlinear editing system, um, but it sucked. And I think Avid had started coming out, and Avid was ridiculously expensive at that time. Um, so we, most places, did linear editing. So I was using three-quarter inch decks with a, a um, AB controller, and we got this really crappy Videonics switcher um, so that I could do effects between the A and the B. And the controller wasn't even frame accurate. It was really bad. Um, every, I figured it out. I started to learn its nuances. One of the nuances was that every seven frames, it would skip forward two. So if I wanted to do something that was like down to the frame, I had to sit there and count which frames so I would know which one it was going to skip forward on. Um, and that was really annoying. And I ended up, sometimes I, I actually put some clips together where I, I was doing one where I was doing a shot every two frames, like a different shot every two frames. And I ended up having to put two frames together on one tape and then take that tape off and put it into the B-roll so that I could, I could edit four frames into there because that thing would skip forward. And it was awful. So that's pretty much how I got my start. I've been at this particular place since 1994. I did have a two-year hiatus, but I've basically been here for almost 20 years now. Or at least I've been doing this for almost 20 years. And you know what? I don't go back and say, oh, gee, I wish I'd done the music thing. I'm actually, I, I really enjoy what I do. I think it's a lot of fun. And I do get to use my music every now and then. Um, but I don't, I don't regret that. This is the final title. I put it on last because this particular title does have quite a bit of stuff in it. So, title is there. Now let's grab the music. I usually grab my music from the previous project. Okay, so that's pretty much it. That was editing the whole program and showing you the stability controls, some of the new controls. Um, and that's it. Thanks so much for watching.